Welcome to MTBS's 3D Buying Guide. I'm Neil Schneider. There's a lot of misinformation out there about 3D, so we're, we're looking to solve that. This primer will explain how 3D works, what technologies are available, and rules to follow when shopping for 3D equipment. Now, let's start with something simple. What is 3D? Well, 3D is a real sense of depth. When you play 3D games or watch 3D movies, the screen will look like a window. It won't look like a, a flat projection or a flat screen. It should seem as though you can stick your hand right in and, and things may seem to be flying right out at you. That's what 3D is all about. And it's, it's a lot of fun when it's done properly. Now, in the near future, you should expect to see a lot of 3D video games, movies, uh, broadcasting, uh, sports programming. The industry is very much committed, and if you buy a 3D television or a display today, you should have confidence that there's going to be a lot of content supporting it in the near future. Now, how 3D works? Well, you've got two eyes for a very good reason. If you close one eye at a time, you'll see that you have two perspectives. Now, each eye is giving a different set of information than the other. What your brain does is it combines these two perspectives and creates this full 3D experience that everyone, everyone enjoys. Now, 3D technology works by showing two perspectives on your display and filtering each each image to each eye. So 3D glasses are the best way of doing this and there are two dominant technologies. First are LCD shutter glasses. Now this is this is an example of shutter glasses made by Panasonic and they come with their Viera 3D HD TVs and there are other examples by LG and, and Sony Bravia and so on. So there's a whole list of shutter glasses out there. The other option are polarized glasses. Now this is an example of uh, polarized glasses put out by Zalman with their with their 3D monitors. It's also very similar to the glasses you would get in in a 3D movie theater. Now, uh, the tech in the case of LCD shutter glasses, the technology works in two parts. First is the display. So the display works by alternating a left and right view very, very quickly, as fast as 120 times per second. So right next to me is the Panasonic Viera 3D HD TV. This is their 50-inch their model. And if we look at the screen carefully, this, this is Wipeout HD uh, in 3D being played on a Sony PlayStation. It almost looks like a, well, up close, it looks like a doubled image. But what's really happening is it's a left and right image alternating one after the other after the other. But it's happening so quickly it looks double. Now this display speed of 120 times per second is also referred to as a refresh rate. So this is considered a 120 hertz display. Now the glasses, and let's look at the glasses here, these are the LCD shutter glasses that come with the television. If we look closely at the lenses, they're either in a transparent state or a black state, which means that you can't see through them. So it alternates like black, transparent, black, transparent, black, transparent, and it does this very quickly in cooperation with the display. So the two synchronize, and it happens so quickly of seeing left, right, left, right, left, right, you get this full 3D experience. Now what are the benefits of LCD shutter glasses? Well first, you get this full resolution per eye experience. Uh, it's easy to view a television like this in different parts of the room, so it doesn't matter where you're sitting as long as you're somewhat in front of the television. And you can have multiple glasses in the room, so you could easily distribute these glasses to everyone in, in the room and everyone can enjoy the 3D television at the same time. There are some drawbacks though. First, there's a significant drop in brightness. So it's, you know, if you were looking through shutter glasses, it would be a bit darker than you would normally see when watching a, a television. So modern 3D HDTVs are, tend to be brighter than traditional HDTVs. Additional glasses are a bit pricier. Uh, I mean, if we, look, if we look at glasses like these or other shutter glasses, they're somewhat more elaborate because there's some mechanics going on with, with LCD you know, displays and so on. So it's, it's a bit more expensive than, than traditional glasses. Now, polarized glasses are, and that's, uh, this is an example of polarized, is very similar to the technology used in 3D movie theaters. There's no moving parts, which is why, one of the reasons why they call it a, a passive display. Now, the way this works is instead of having, um, you know, 
a, a shuddering effect or flickering left, right, left, right, left, right, what happens is light is vibrated at two different wavelengths. And an interlaced display will divide the vertical resolution in half. So 50% of the lines are for the left eye and 50% of the lines are for the right. Now what happens is these, these lines are marked a different way. So they're vibrated one way for the left, one way for the right. And the glasses, or these polarized glasses, will filter the light wavelengths according to each eye. So 50% of the light will be seen by the left lens, 50% will be seen by the right. And from, you know, from our point of view, we get this full 3D experience. Now the benefits of this technology is there's, there's significantly less loss of light. So unlike shutter glasses, which have a somewhat darker display, polarized solutions are, are somewhat brighter. Another benefit is, you know, Polarized glasses like this are very inexpensive. They're, you know, this is why you could fill a, a 3D movie theater with these glasses because they're they're very cheap to make. Um, but there are some drawbacks. Unlike the theater experience, in the case of an interlaced display, you do lose half the vertical resolution. And it also is a little more restrictive when it comes to having more than one person looking at the screen at the same time. So now that we know a little bit about how the technology works. Uh, here are some rules to follow when you're actually shopping for, for 3D displays and so on. First, buy the display before you buy the glasses. Brands, glasses and displays, they don't always mix. So for example, if you buy a, a Panasonic television, don't buy the Sony Bravia th you know, 3D glasses to go with it because they're not going to match up. Uh, content is not a problem. Uh, all the 3D content should work equally well in all the th different 3D displays but the glasses themselves are rarely interchangeable. Something else to be aware of, I know I've been talking about movie theaters, that the technology is somewhat similar. Don't bring home 3D movie theater glasses thinking that they're going to work on your television. They won't. Very different. Next rule, make sure the display is actually 3D ready. Uh, I mentioned earlier that you know, LCD shutter glasses require 120 hertz displays, but a lot of HDTVs promote themselves as having high refresh rates, you know, anywhere from 240 hertz to 600 hertz and so on. This often has absolutely nothing to do with 3D. So make sure that the television is labeled as being 3D ready or having 3D compatibility. Uh, another thing, give things a chance. Um, often when I go to a, a retail store, the glasses are broken or the screen doesn't look quite right. Um, but it, it, you know, this has nothing to do with the quality of the television or the quality of the 3D experience. It's just that for whatever reason, things aren't set up properly. So if you go to a store, you see a 3D television, you're not quite impressed with it, ask a retail representative to give you a private tour so you, you, you see the way things are supposed to be seen. Also, don't limit yourself to a demo reel. Um, you know, you have every right. You should ask to, to look at content from a PlayStation or, or ask to see a 3D Blu-ray. Get a sample of how the TV is really going to perform in your living room. Now, uh, another rule, ignore the anti-3D hype. If, if you want a great 3D gaming experience, if you have fun at 3D movie theaters, you have every reason to get a 3D television and enjoy a similar experience in your home. Um, final rule, research, research, research. Before you go to the store, read reviews, talk to fellow 3D consumers. I know here at mtbs3d.com we've got a lot of active gamers who could tell you everything you want to know about 3D. And that's it. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for our next segment about 3D HDTVs.